I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm just so happy right now. In this chapter, we finally have the bombastic conclusion to the fight that we've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a long, long time coming, all right? But we've finally reached it. Now listen, listen. I know there's going to be a lot of arguments involved on which character put forward more effort, maybe which character did more damage than the other one. But the thing is, you gotta understand that it's just, the proof is in the pudding right here. I don't really know what else to say to you, okay? In this chapter, we finally get to the conclusion of Raizo versus Fuku Rokuchu. And if anybody out there ever had any other opinion on which of the scabbards was the strongest, you're wrong. It's Raizo. Raizo is stronger than Denjiro. Kinemon Raizo put put forward more effort than any other scabbard in this story, okay? So I don't want to hear anything from anybody, alright? Raizo managed to stick it out, and he beat Fuku Rokuju down. Also, Kid in Law defeat Big Mom, I guess. This will be One Piece Chapter 1040 review titled Wasted Words on Young Ears. Referring to the phrase of like, I don't know, an elderly person giving a younger person advice and they're just like, whatever, Grandpa, I don't need to listen to you, and then they just leave, right? Um, I have some, uh, oh, okay. My grandmother, very religious person, I remember one time I went down her house on Sunday and she's like, well, what are you doing today? And I'm like, oh, not much, I'm just gonna do my laundry. And my grandmother was like, you can't do laundry on Sundays. You have six other days of the week to do your laundry. You do not do your laundries on Sunday. And I'm like, okay, grandma, okay. So there you go. Wasted words on young ears because I still did my laundry. All right, um, cover page, cover serial, really fun one. We have the continuation of the Germa, and we have Yonji and Niji still trapped in Mont Dor's book. And they're just like, well, they're actually really cool. They're just like in the book, but they're like still looking really cool and stoic, you know, like, you know, they're just, like, crossing their arms, like, you know, like, thumbtacked into the book, and they don't look like they're in pain, and they don't look like they're about to be, like, spilling the beans on the germa or be, like, you know, intimidated by oven's interrogation or anything like that, but they're remembering back to when they were captured, because remember, at the very, very end of Totland, um, after Big Mom consumed the cakey, after she ate the cake, um, she got on one of, uh, Pero Sparrow's, like, candy creations, I think it was a frog, and she was, like, speeding towards Cacao Island. That's why, you know, the Straw Hats and Jinbei was in, like, Jinbei was in such a hurry to get, you know, Luffy and everybody out of there, and Jinbei stood behind to, you know, uh, give them enough time to escape, right? And so Big Mom arrived at Cacao Island, and she just beat the crap out of the Germa. So we see a scene here, like a little thought bubble of Niji and Yonji remembering Big Mom just grabbing Yonji, I'm grabbing Niji with her arm, and then just punching Yonji in the face. And the caption is, you know, a beast that size could not triumph over. You know, the idea that, like, does, despite all of the Germa tech and the raid suit technology and all that kind of stuff, they could not defeat Big Mom. She is beyond the realms of science. Which, I don't know about that one, you know. I, let's get Senku on this. What do you think? Alright, let me throw something out here, okay? Senku, with all modern technology at his disposal, and he has one year of prep time. Could he defeat Big Mom? And he also knows what Big Mom's deal is, okay? So Senku has access to the One Piece wiki. He can read all about Big Mom. He's got access to all of modern technology. And he has one year to prepare. I think Senku could take down Big Mom. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Right, okay. But you know who can defeat Big Mom? Well, basically a hole. A giant hole defeated Big Mom, but we'll get to it, alright? So, we continue where we left off last chapter with Kid uh, forming his railgun and just bombarding Big Mom with it, you know? And, you know, last chapter we just saw him launch, like, the single attack, like the one laser beam that, like, hit her right in the chest, the same location that Law used his puncture villi technique, right? And uh, Oda even gives us a nice little map here to kind of showcase where this is going, and it's the first panel of 
of the chapter, one of the first panels of the chapter, where we see mainland Wano at the bottom with the giant gaping hole in it, the crater that Law made, and then we cut up to Onigashima where there's the other hole that went down at the bottom of where the basement was, and the fight right now between Kid Law and Big Mom is taking place right on top of this. So there's like just a thin little area here of, of footing of like the ground, and if that gets destroyed, Big Mom is falling straight down through Onigashima and down to mainland Wano where there's going to be another crater that she's going to fall into. I wonder if that's going to play a role at all. Kid, you know, he's following the zombie land rule of the double tap. You know, he's not like, he's not just like, you know, railgun, damned punk, bam! All right. One shot and one body. That's how it's done. No, Kid is up there just like, die! He's like unloading the attack. He's like giving it everything he's got. He's like, I am not gonna stop firing this damn railgun until either you die or I pass out, all right? It's not happening, all right? I'm giving it every single ounce of energy, hockey, uh, whatever I have, okay? So you gotta give uh, Kid just a, a round of applause for that, all right? He's not taking any chances here, okay? Unfortunately, even despite the onslaught, Big Mom does not really seem like she's taken a lot of damage from this. You know, even after Law's attack and now Kid's attack, she's not on the ground like, ah, you know, she's kind of smirking. She's kind of like, ah, all right, you can get your temper tantrum out, but as soon as you're done firing this damn railgun at me, I'm going to rip out all of your damn souls. You know what this reminds me of? Remember, it was the, probably the, one of the most badass moments in all of Dragon Ball Z, right? Right? where you got semi-perfect cell in, you know, he was going up against the androids, and then, you know, Goku's not there yet, so you literally had Tien Shinhan. Tien Shinhan, a character that had not been relevant in, like, years up to that point, he's the one that showed up and was like, you know, you know, Neo Tribeam Cannon, or whatever, and he was, like, blasting semi-perfect cell, and there's, like, you know as a fan, there's no way in hell Tien is gonna defeat Cell, especially when he's in this form, but it's like, man, he's giving it everything he's got. He's like, even if I can hold Cell off for like five minutes, that's good enough, right? And he's just unloading, and that's kind of what I feel here. Like, Kid knows that he's already exhausted, right? But he knows if he lets up now, everybody's screwed. So he's going to give it everything he's got, right? And so he just keeps unloading. You got the Kid Pirates, you got the Heart Pirates off to the side, and they're all just like, you know, what is she? You know, it doesn't even look like she's defeated yet. They they make note that it's like, this is not the look of, of someone that's about to die. This does not look like Big Mom like death throws or whatever. This actually looks like she's not even close to death yet, right? And so they're all freaking out. And so Big Mom is there while getting bombarded with the damned punk railgun, and she's like, all right, you know, after this is all done, you can choose. Give me your souls or live 50 years as my slave. Life or slave! And so that's like the soul pocus, like another variation with that, proving that it doesn't need to be food. I think we've already established that it doesn't have to be. You know, she's like life or cake, you know, life or a croquem bush, life or Oshi. Ruko. But no, it can literally be anything. It's just she's big mom. She prefers food. But even if there's no food available or if she's not in the mood for anything, she could still just do life or slave. So give up your souls to her for her energy or just, you know, allow her to um, allow yourself to become her slave for 50 years, right? And so the technique that we already know, it, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. It's just if you exhibit any fear or terror uh, to big mom, then you're going to get your soul ripped out, right? And so all of, you know, kids pirates and the heart pirates, they have their souls beginning to leave their body, um, and so everybody's freaking out, except for Kid and Law. Kid and Law are actually really cool here. They're like about as cool as a cucumber, right? You know, Kid still is blasting off his cannon. Law is just walking toward uh, the misery, the attack that Big Mom unleashed last time. The misery, the electric fire soul homie appears behind Law, about to like attack him. But even so, even though it's like it's such a cool anime moment, it really is, where Law has his sword and it's just like, yeah, I know there's a giant, I know there's a giant woman made of light lightning and fire behind me right now, but um, 
that's not a big deal. I don't need to worry about that. I'm Trafalgar Law, right? And so they're just so cool about it. And so just like how Jinbei was able to resist the soul pocus because of his resolve, his his stalwart resolve, same deal with Kid and Law here. And I don't have a problem with that. You know, Jinbei was able to do it. I feel like Luffy would be able to do it as well because of his strong will. We know Kid has Conqueror's Hockey. Um, honestly, it's never been revealed that Law has it, but if Law was revealed to have Conqueror's Hockey, would any would anybody be surprised by that? I don't think anybody would, but whatever. They're so, you know, uh, just dedicated right now. I think just because they, even though, like, the members of their crews think that Big Mom is not close to death, I think maybe because Law and Kid are closer to Big Mom's level, they can understand, and even Kid said himself, like, why would we be afraid of an old hag who's on her deathbed? You know, why would we be afraid of an old woman that's about to die, basically, is his translation of that. And so they're not terrified at all, and they just just keep blasting the attack here. Law shows up and he uses a technique, a new move, a new awakening move, which there hasn't been enough of those yet. Uh, he uses our room or re room. All right. Now, this is really cool. I wonder how many rooms he has. Can we just go down the alphabet? A room, B room, C room. <laughs> you know, just go down the whole alphabet. But he's got K room and now he's got our room or re room. All right. Now, this is a technique that he got uh, basically inspired from Corazon. And I love this. I love the. Um, the, the, the trope whenever like a student or someone that like studied under a master that like had died or something. I love it when they reincorporate their moves into their own you know, like move set. Basically the same thing that Luffy did with uh, the Red Hawk that scene at Fishman Island when he busted out Red Hawk and you see like the ethereal image of Ace using the Heeken. I, I eat that shit up. I love that kind of stuff whenever I read a manga and this is perfect, okay? And it makes sense given Law's ability and why the Op-Op fruit is, let's be straight up here, like the most broken devil fruit ever. It has all these different abilities thrown into it. It's got electrical abilities. It's got like like radiation abilities with like the gamma knife. It's got abilities like, okay, how many devil fruits does the Opie Op Nomi really like resemble? You got Buggy's Bara Bara. You have Enaru's Goro Goro because it has electrical charges with it. Um, you have abilities to like swap personalities and things which might be kind of similar to like uh, uh, maybe Pudding's Memo Memo Nomi if she could take like the memory out of somebody and throw it into somebody else. That's that's kind of similar to that. And now we got our room, which is like the Com Com fruit, which is the ability the Corazon had, right? And so he opens up this R room, and it's basically, a, it's the same technique that um, Corazon did. It's the bubble. He creates the soundless bubble. It's like a soundproof barrier that any sound inside cannot emit outside, all right? And once again, this makes perfect sense that Law, with his ability with room, would be able just to shut off the sound from inside the bubble or outside the bubble or whatever, like sound can't get in or sound can't get out. And you just realize in this chapter, this took a while to, like, because Big Mom's been using her abilities for, like, dozens of chapters at this point, right? We know what Big Mom is capable of, but it just dawned on me just now how much of Big Mom's techniques rely on her speaking in order to activate. Like, she actually has to verbally say life or treat, or life or slave, or whatever, in order to activate that ability. Uh, whenever she's falling down somewhere, she has to verbally call out for Prometheus, or Zeus, or Hera, or Napoleon to help her. Right? When you think about it, a lot of her techniques, I so basically what I'm saying here is Roshanane, if he was still alive, would have finished off Big Mom years ago. But no, like that ability, the Com Com Fruit, is sort of a hard counter to Big Mom's here, right? And it just so happens that Law has the Op Op Fruit, but he also has a bunch of other fruits in his utility belt, and this just happens to be one of them. So in a beautiful double page spread, we have the souls of all the pirates beginning to get sucked out. Law opens up the R room, their souls begin to go back in their bodies, and Big Mom's like, Mama, 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 wait a second. And then, <laughs> meanwhile, Law is still, I mean, like, Kid is still blasting. Meanwhile, while this is going on, Misery attacks Law. Law, without even looking at the damn thing, just takes out Kikoku and just, Shing! And then just slices Misery in half lengthwise. Just splits Misery in half while uh, Kid continues the damn punk bombardment. And then finally, it opens up the hole, destroys the ground underneath Big Mom. She begins to fall down the hole. She calls out for Prometheus and Hera to save her, but she's not making any sound, so she's like, 
and she's yelling and she's falling down and then she hits the basement where you know Yamato versus the Kanzimbo is in progress but the the bubble the, the R room is not making any sound so I want you to imagine that right there Yamato is already kind of weirded out when the giant like sword just impales the floor and just opens up a giant crater and Yamato's like all right well something crazy must be going on up there but I have to fight this fire monster and then out of nowhere the the ceiling explodes but makes no sound as Big Mom in this giant bubble emerges hits the floor and just falls down the hole meanwhile she grabs like she's trying to grab onto anything so she can break her fall she grabs onto those one of those giant cartoon like explosives like the Wile E. Coyote explosive you know with the giant wick that Yamato previously froze so Big Mom like grabs onto that thing now it's frozen but it still kind of detonates and so the explosion goes off Yamato has to throw up like an ice barrier to prevent the other explosives from going off in the process the Kanzimbo seems to get sucked down as well because the Kanzimbo is like oh Rochi so more and then we just see it like get sucked off of panel and so maybe Big Mom grabbed onto that or it was attached to one of the bombs or whatever but anyway that the Kanzimbo is going down with Big Mom they fall through the hole of Onigashima they fall you know over mainland Wano and as Big Mom is falling she has her last like her thoughts as she's going about this because she can't speak she can't hear her own voice so as she's just falling and nothing can stop her she's just thinking and uh cue up like Enya you know it's like who can say where the road goes as Big Mom's like falling it's like in slow mo she's just like mama, mama, mama. you know she's falling down and the last thing she thinks about is Roger she's like Damn you, Roger. Why did you have to do it? You're the one that started all this, right? She's like, why did you have to do that? You were right about to die, and you had to say those stupid words. You had to say, you know, if you watch my treasure, you can find it, matey. And it's like, Big Mom's like, do you know how much damn trouble you started for me and Kaido and all the other members of the old guard? Yeah, sure. You didn't care. You were about to get your head cut off. Or actually, like, Roger didn't get his head cut off. There's, like, this weird, like, execution method in the One Piece world where they just kind of take, like, two pikes or spears and they just kind of stab you in the heart. Like, that's the preferred method in the One Piece world. Whatever. Anyway, Nolan had the same execution method. But anyway, whatever. He's like, yeah, you didn't care because you were about to die. So you don't care about the fallout of this. Whatever. We were the ones that had to pick up your mess because the second you said those words, Words. Five seconds after you died, the Great Pirate Era started, and then all these little peons decided they could all be pirates, and they went out to sea, and they're just a huge pain in my ass, okay? And they're just like, they're going around, they're trying to beat us, they're trying to be kings of those seas, kings of the world, and then you know, Big Mom is just like, why couldn't you have just told us where the damn One Piece is, Roger? Is it even real? Is it even a real thing? Pause right there. This is where we get the panel that Fuku Rokuju was defeated by Ryza. So I'm just gonna stop this right now. You know, Big Mom talking about Roger and the nature of the One Piece, that's not important, okay? We need to focus on this, all right? So we see a scene there where the entire area is just awash in flames. The whole thing is up in flames at this point. Fuku Rokuju has finally been defeated. He releases his paralysis jutsu. He falls on the ground. He's completely covered in flames. And he's like, water, I need need water. But does Rizo, does he falter? No, he doesn't. Rizo is still standing strong, still performing his paralysis jutsu, not giving an inch. Almost like he really is just ready to die. Like, even though he could give up at this point and leave and Fuku Rokuju would be done, Rizo's like, nope, no way. I've, I've, I've lasted this long. I'm not giving up now. I'm standing here until I see his damn thing you know, flesh burn off and he's just like a charred skeleton. I'm, I'm staying here for that, right? I'm in this for the long haul. So I salute you, Rizo. Keep with it. We also see Zoro here with all the craziness going on with the explosions and, you know, kids blasting and, you know, the explosion going off in the basement. Uh, we see Robin and Brooke and they're kind of faltering. Uh, we also see Zoro lying on the ground. We don't see the Grim Reaper anymore, although Zoro does look like he's passed out and we see kind of like blood all around his face. 
So no Reaper, but he doesn't look too good. And because of the explosion, it kind of like knocks the part of the island he's on off. So he's just like lying on the ground unconscious and then boom, and he just gets, we just see his body flying off. We don't see it like fly off of Onigashima itself, like it's going over the edge, but you know, there's a lot of damage where he's standing or where he's laying. So that's kind of a big deal there. We also see a scene with Orochi really quick where Orochi looks like he's just like on the ground. And, and this is a little confusing because Komurasaki Hiori is still playing the shamisen as all these explosions are going on. So, you know, they're like, oh, what's going on? And Orochi, it just looks like he fell over. It doesn't look like he was attacked or anything or he was like stabbed by Denjiro in the in the background or something. It just looks like, you know, I am listening to Komurasaki. Boom. Oh, what's with that explosion? That's not good. You know, it's probably like something like that happened, okay? Well, anyway, as we resume with Big Mom's, like, last thoughts, uh, she's like, you know, why, uh, you know, why did you say that, Roger? Is the One Piece even real? Which, by the way, I mean, Whitebeard pretty much confirmed it, right? Like, that was the whole point of why Whitebeard's words were so powerful at the end of Marineford, you know? Roger kind of sets it up like this One Piece exists. Twenty-something years go by, nobody's found it, so at that point, people are thinking, you know, Roger was just screwing with us. But then Whitebeard, just two years ago, was like, One Piece! It exists! And everyone's like, what? And then so, you know, Big Mom, I guess, you know, still was dubious as to whether or not it was real or not, even with Whitebeard confirming it. So her last thoughts is right before she's about to fall into that crater in mainland Wano. It's like, what is it? Where is it? It's in, part of it's in this country too, isn't it? It's so frustrating. I'll never forgive you for this, Roger! And then she falls down and she says, don't you think? For a single moment, this is enough to kill me. And then BOOM! Big Mom go boom. That chapter. Big Mom go boom. It's over. Okay. So she falls into the crater. Giant nuclear bomb. This is from one bomb. I think just one bomb that she grabbed. And I guess the Konzimbo lit it. And just... Wait. Boom! And it's like an atomic blasting site just goes off. Like, we see the damn mushroom cloud. It's bigger than the flower capital. Now, also at the same time, the R room, like, expands to even bigger than the explosion. Or I guess it expands along with the explosion. So, no sound is coming from this giant explosion. It's just picture a nuke going off, but no sound accompanying it, right? And so you still see the flower capital and, like, the songs and dancing and people are playing music and having a good time and I guess nobody's just looking out. Imagine the one dude out on the balcony in the flower capital. He's looking over the endless wasteland of Wano getting a drink and he's like, well, I guess it's time we turn in for the night. This was a fun festival. This was my last festival. I think I'm just going to drink a little bit more before I go to bed now. <laughs> and there's giant explosions in the freaking background, okay? As we have the narrator coming over, let me try to do my best One Piece narrator voice. <clears throat> Emperor of the Sea, Big Mom. <clears throat> Big Mom versus Trafalgar D. Water Law and Eustace Captain Kid. Victor, Trafalgar Law, and Captain Kid. Well, all right, one down, four to go. That only took 1,040 damn chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know math. I mean, you're asking me to subtract one from four. I mean, this is, this is way beyond my level, okay? But yeah, there's three Yonko left for right now, I think. Yeah, yeah, three is the right number. But we're making progress, okay. So we got one down, we got four left to go. You know, Blackbeard's gonna be pretty tricky. Kaido's probably gonna be taken out by the end of this arc. Shanks is, he's probably gonna be the one that's gonna last at the end of it. It'll only just be the one co, the one emperor, and that will be, that will be Shanks, okay. So, the biggest thing here, and this was something Sandman AP actually posted on Twitter, and it's a good thing he did, because otherwise I would have been a little bit confused on this, okay? The line that is a big deal here is when Big Mom is falling in the hole, she says, The One Piece 
it's supposed to be here, as it, implying Juana, or part of it is supposed to be here. Now, there was a slew of different translations I saw with this. One translation was, you know, um, you know, the way to get there is supposed to be here. So that was like maybe implying the road poneglyph, right? It's like, oh, okay, the road poneglyph's in this island, so therefore. Other translations are like, Wano is connected to the One Piece, and we already knew that because of the Kozuki and the road poneglyph, so that was already obvious. That wasn't a big deal. But the official translation that Viz uses, let me just make sure I got that right here, just so I can read that word verbatim, because this is very important. Some of it is in this country too, isn't it? Ugh, I'm so close. That's why Big Mom feels so frustrated here, because she's like, some of the One Piece was supposed to be in Wano, and now she's being defeated before she could figure out what's going on here. And Sandman AP says, yeah, that was like essentially what the original Japanese said, and a lot of fans in Japan are losing their shit right now because of that statement right there, okay? So, that is one of those things that Oda drops into the manga that's just like, 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 it's like overload right now. It's like, I really need to sit down and think about that, but the part of the One Piece. Okay, first of all, that's not One Piece, Oda. You lied, Oda. The One Piece is supposed to be in One Piece. You're breaking it up into different pieces. That goes like, I don't even know what's up or down anymore. Come on. <laughs> that's the big reveal. We get to laugh. Just, actually, it wasn't just One Piece. Roger was messing with you. There's actually ten of them. And just like, this story will never end. It's like, damn it, no. That would be the biggest troll job ever. Oda's like, yeah, One Piece will end in about four or five years. Then we go on to Two Piece, and then Three Piece, and then Four Piece, and then Five Piece. Five Piece was kind of weak. You know, I didn't really care for Five Piece too much, but Six Piece, it really brought it back together. And then when they got to Seven Piece, you know, they kind of took that whole, uh, they took like the current uh, world they lived in and sort of had like a different timeline going on, right? But, you know, Seven Piece and Eight Piece were still kind of connected. And then Eight Piece just ended, and I was like, okay with that. I mean, that was an all right one. It kind of went on for a long time, but it was a good series. And now we have the ninth piece about to start soon, and we don't know what's up with that yet, but, you know, Oda has to be getting tired at this point. That was a JoJo reference, if anybody got that. Everyone's like, what, is he referencing JoJo? I'm like, yes, I am. Good job. You got it. All right, so obviously it's not going to be anything of that level, but uh, it kind of does go against the term, because we assumed, like, one piece, it's a treasure in one piece on one island, and it's like, that's the finish line, all right? But the way Big Mom implied was just like, wait a second, it's supposed to be here, right? Part of it's supposed to be here. So, look. I think it's it's fair to say the One Piece is not a standard treasure, okay? It's not just like, like, you ever see the movie National Treasure with Nick Cage? You know, Nicolas Cage. You know, you walk into the giant treasure room and there's like gold doubloons everywhere and everything, like gems and crowns. And I, I honestly think that'll be part of it. You know, like all the treasure that Roger had amassed throughout his journey, he'll just leave on Laugh Tale. That'll be part of the reward, but there's gonna be way, 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 way more to it than that. The actual just gold and jewels and gems, that's going to be just like, that's going to be a consolation prize if nothing else. That'll be something for Nami to get excited over, but that's not even like, you know, 99% of the true treasure. That's just like 1% of it, right? The rest of it's, you know, very valuable information about the Void Century, stuff involving Joy Boy, stuff involving Eam probably, the Will of D, you know, that's going to be all that, a lot of other things going on here. So, if the One Piece might just be one piece of like history or the piece of history that connects everything together. Uh, maybe the way Big Mom was referring to it. And Big Mom doesn't even know 100%. She's just like you know, wasn't part of it supposed to be here, right? Implying that, like, she heard a rumor or through her information network, she doesn't know exactly what it's supposed to be or exactly what is supposed to be in Wano, but she heard a rumor or something at some point in her life, like, part of the One Piece was supposed to be in Wano. If it's just information, then maybe part of that information involving the Void Century is here in Wano, and so that's what she didn't get a chance to find out, right? So, um, this is definitely gonna be a video, because this is that may be more, more than one, because this is a big piece of information we're finding out about the story and about the end point, of course. And it makes sense that if, you know, uh, Oda's going to have the conclusion of this fight with a Yonko right before she falls in the hole and explodes, you know, she talks a little bit about important stuff to the story, right? Now, as for the way Big Mom was finished off, 
I actually don't have a problem with it. I voiced some complaints in a video I made yesterday talking about like lawn kids, like infinite amount of stamina, and that is still an issue. But I gotta be honest with you, I'm not even mad because of all the setup. I want you to think about this, okay? Like, the whole thing with the armory and the Kanzenbo and Yamato, you know, fighting against the Kanzenbo, freezing the bombs. So many people had all these different theories of like, oh, they're going to take the bombs and throw them on the government ships, right? I don't know if anybody expected this to happen, but literally all of that. You were like, oh, Kondro creating the Kanzenbo, that's so stupid, he should just die. No, that was all a setup so he could have a way for Big Mom to be defeated. All this crap! The whole subplot with the armory, the whole subplot with Yamato, the whole subplot with Kondro and the Kanzenbo, and then pl plus Lawn Kid's fight with Big Mom, that was all just one setup to get a giant freaking crater in Wano so Big Mom could fall into it and then a nuke could go off. I love it! I love it! It's great! Okay, isn't it fantastic? Oh my god, it's great. Um, and no, she's not dead. As she says as she's falling, she's like, Don't you think for a minute this will kill me? So, no, she's not dead. But this fight wasn't trying to kill a Yonko. It was trying to win the fight. She's taken out of the fight, okay? She's not... She'll probably get back up, but it'll take a while. It'll take a while for her homies to go down there and reach her. And she's in the bottom of a giant crater right now, so whatever. I don't know. Maybe we can have her wake up in the crater and be like, My Mama, 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 what's going on here? She loses her memory again for like the third time. You know, whatever. Okay, so I, I honestly think this was a good way to finish it off just because it wasn't just like kids shooting her in the face and that like just finished her off right there. It's like, no, it showed that like if she were able to absorb souls, she could keep going. And that soul, soul fruit does not really have a weakness. So the only way to really do, I mean, it does have a weakness, but not like a weakness in absorbing the souls. It's a weakness in just closing her off so she can't speak, so nobody can hear her. Okay, uh, which like I said the com com fruit really is kind of a hard counter to this now I actually think about it, but yeah, so we cut back up to Onigashima. We see kid just pass out on the ground. And he's just like, is it over? Did we win? And then Law passes out too, but he does it in a really cool way. Kid just kind of collapses on the ground after like a long day of work and you just get home and you just pass out on your bed like I'm not moving. Law is like, all right. All right, I'm really tired and I'm gonna pass out too, but I'm gonna do it in a cool way. I'm gonna take my sword here on my shoulder and I'm just gonna lay up against this wall and I have my hat here, you know, and I, oh, I don't have Law's hat. I moved Law's hat, I don't know where it is. Okay, whatever, we're just gonna use old Tony's hat from Isekai d and And so Law is just kind of like, mm. Yeah, that's the cool way to pass out. <laughs> you know, like that's how Law does it, right? And so all of the kid pirates and the heart pirates together in unison are like, They did it! They beat Big Mom! Let's have a party! Oh man, they are close to dying. So they pick up their respective captains and like, It'll be okay, Captain! You'll be alright! You'll go down in history for this! Alright, um, can we both have Kid and Law's bounty shoot up to over a billion? I don't even, you know what? I, I'm highballing it. I don't even care anymore, okay? Because I lowball the Straw Hats bounties every time they're about to get new bounties. I don't even care anymore, okay? Luffy's bounty's gonna be over five billion at the end of this arc. Kid and Law's are gonna be over three. There you go. That's my, I'm throwing my bet in there. I'm throwing in my, my chips, okay? There you go. Okay, so uh, now we have, if that wasn't big enough, we have the last scene of the chapter where we cut now back down to the basement where Yamato is just like, all right, I guess the fight's over. And she's just like, okay. She's like, she's like fighting the Kanzenbo, like, I will not let you blow up these. Ah! <laughs> Okay. There's nothing else in the basement. There's nobody else. I guess uh, uh, Fuga defeated Roku, you know, the, 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 uh, the six numbers, so there's nothing else going on there. So he's like, oh, okay. So Yamato freezes all the rest of the bombs, you know, what she did there to do. And then she just kind of goes over to the hole, the giant gaping hole at the bottom of Onigashima now. That's kind of a hazard. You might want to, you know, p paste over that with something. And, and Yamato's looking out and sees Momonosuke. So Momonosuke is still pulling the clouds, and he looks over like, oh, Yamato, you're good? And and Yamato's like, yeah, I'm good. I mean, I guess Big Mom just fell down this giant drain plug and then took the Kanzenbo with her. I, ex I uh, froze all the bombs, 
so none of the else will explode, so we don't have to worry about that. And Momonosuke is like, okay, well, I can't really talk because I'm pulling this island. I'm still trying to get away. Oh, but just to let you know, uh, Zunisha is here, and Yamato's like, the giant elephant? Because, you know, Yamato remembers reading about Zunisha in the logbook. I don't know if, you know, uh, Odin put in the name of the giant elephant, but he's like, Zoe's on a giant elephant, and so Momo's like, yeah, 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 that's the one. One of uh, Joy Boy's Nakama, remember, from 800 years ago. Okay, I still gotta pull the, I gotta pull the island. And so Yamato's like, wait, 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 what? Yeah. And so end of chapter, and we have a break next week, um, so keep that in mind. But yeah, so, I mean, like, honestly, it's one of those things where you get whiplash, where it's like, we already had the defeat of Big Mom and the conclusion of Raizo and Fuku Rokuju's fight, and then Big Mom's statement about the One Piece, and it ends with like, oh yeah, by the way, Zunisha lore! I'm like, oh, okay, I'll take some Zunisha lore. So, Zunisha was a former comrade of Joy Boy. Um, I don't remember what video it was in, but I definitely talked about that at some point. Um, you know, I, I talked about from both ends, like, what if Zunisha was actually an enemy or a villain? What if Zunisha was actually an ally, but I was leaning more towards this of Zunisha being an ally of Joy Boy in some capacity. And so he's like, yeah, he, the elephant committed a serious crime 800 years ago. We already knew that. And uh, back when it was Joy Boy's companion or Joy Boy's Nakama. All right. So that means that Joy Boy had a giant elephant on his crew, which makes him pretty badass. I mean, the Straw Hats have Chopper and he could go Monster Point, but I mean, like, it's a giant elephant. You really can't get over that. Go check out Elephant Fat. Right? Okay, that's there's your elephant fact for this episode about Sunisha. Um, okay, so I'll be making a video about that too, because I'm like, alright, we've we've learned a little bit more, but it's like it's it's big information, it's big news, but it's not as big like as you think right now, just because it's like we kind of already assume that. You know, like like a Zunisha has Zoe on its back, Zunisha was communicating with Momo. I'm curious as to whether or not Momo found out this information just now when Zunisha was communicating with Momo as a dragon, like, you know, last chapter, and it was like, oh, I'm 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 hearing somebody trying to talk to me. So did Zunisha tell Momonosuke this last chapter, like, I used to be Joy Boy's friend? Or was this something that Momo found out about when when he was like communing with Zunisha way back when, you know, when Luffy and everybody was at Totland. And I only bring that up, it's because, well, Momo had plenty of opportunities to tell Luffy this or Robin this, like, oh, by the way, I was talking to Zunisha and I found out some really interesting information. So did he find out about it then and just not tell the Straw Hats or it happened off camera? Or does he just learned about this like just now, right? And Momonosuke has a very serious kind of expression on his face as he's saying this. So we'll probably maybe continue this explanation next chapter after that. Uh, that would actually be really interesting to get like a um, uh, like a moment where we get a little bit of lore in the story and like and then like next chapter and then we just immediately cut to Luffy versus Kaido, which is the only battle left. And that is, I think, why Oda put in Raizo and Fuku Rokuju just wrapping up their battle. Yeah, I guess we still have the thing with Orochi that needs to be resolved, but I'm thinking the thing with Orochi is probably going to be resolved at the same time Kaido is defeated, just because they're both like the rulers of Wano, and so they both fall at the same time. And of course, Luffy and Kaido's thing will be like center stage, but like we'll have some background stuff with Orochi and Hiori and maybe Dinjiro and the conclusion to how Orochi is going to die and then Kaido and Luffy's fight and how that will conclude, okay? But that's pretty much the only fight we got left. Big Mom's not getting out of that crater anytime soon, so... Boy, howdy, I tell you what. Okay, <laughs> this was a chapter. This was a chapter. I got a lot of really cool stuff to talk about uh, this coming week. A lot of follow-up videos, so uh, stay tuned for that stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching, signing out. One more for the road. Fuku Rokuju!